Welcome to Holistic Health Made Simple. Are you tired of chasing fad diets and endless workouts? Frustrated and confused by the conflicting advice on health and weight loss? Well, you're not alone. I'm Jolene, a nutritional therapy practitioner, and I'm here to guide you on a different path through holistic wellness. Together, we'll blend ancestral wisdom with scientific principles, making health and weight loss a reality. Say goodbye to yo-yo dieting and hello to simple, individualized steps that will help you reach your goals. Let's explore the power of healing your gut, optimizing your metabolism, and embracing whole foods. Ready to make that personalized wellness a reality? Let's get started on your journey to real health. Hello, hello, everybody. I am super excited to have Danae here with me today. She has her bachelor's from Arizona in dance and choreograph and performance. She is a yoga instructor. She's been practicing all the way since 1999, and she's been teaching for over 19 years, so pretty much an expert. Um, she also teaches up at the San Francisco State University. She still dances. She still performs. I am so excited to have her here because she is going to be talking to me today about something that's really dear to me, which is caregiving. Um, caregiving is difficult. And there's a lot of us in our demographic that are sandwiched. So we also have children. I don't personally, but you have children you're caring for as well as parents. So the caregiving aspect and taking care of yourself and all of that. So let's get started and see where we go. First, I'd like Danae to properly introduce herself and tell us a little bit more of how she got started with self like taking care of herself as well as being a care. I mean, family always leads us to caregiving, but how, how that path started. Sure. First, I'm so delighted to be with you, Jolene. Thank you so much for uh, having this time together in conversation about an important topic, caregiving. Yes. So my name is Danae. It sounds like Renee, as Jolene said, been teaching for 19 years. Yoga is um, something I'm extremely passionate about making sure everyone knows that yoga is available to them, no matter age, stage, uh, shade, all the things. And uh, I'm based in the Bay Area. And I'm also my father's caregiver, which I consider it a gift to both of us that I get <laughs> show up and be his caregiver. Um, but that caregiver journey started as you are so correct in saying family brings us to care caregiving. Uh, with my mom. So my mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2005. And she's since passed. And so that sort of became the gateway into caregiving. At that time, I was at university and told my mom and dad, I would drop out of school and come home, uh, only a state away in Arizona. And they said that was nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> and that I have to live my life. However, I, I basically flew home once a month, it was an easy flight. <clears throat> And I was happy to do that. Uh, although my dad really cared for her, I, I was there as best I could. And ovarian cancer is such a brutal disease. Mm -hmm. if, if we're not sure, it's, it's one of the cancers that is often found much too late. And so advanced disease is usually at play. But we were lucky enough to have her around for four and a half years and really learned what a present is, which is not a shiny wrapped box. It's really being in the present being in the present moment with the people mm -hmm. you love, being in the present moment when you're, you know, facing a plate of food that someone prepared for you, really uh, honoring that in the moment quality. Um, so my father is smart, you know, after she did die in 2009, I said, I'll move back home and be with you. Uh, even though I had already started teaching yoga and building my life in Arizona. And he said, how about you finish out the year? So she passed 8.31.09, and I still think about her every day. <laughs> it's a hard one. <laughs> Grief is real, and there's no timeline with it. And uh, he was right, so I, I, you know, finished out the year, moved back, and uh, drove back Christmas Eve, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Made the 12-hour drive from Phoenix, and uh, I've been with him since then. And uh, his health was fine at that point, lucky enough. Uh, he had some cardiac events, but you know, nothing serious. Yeah. And then uh, big serious happened in July of 2017, when he was diagnosed with a stage four cancer. <sighs> so I bring it up 
again with stage four, I don't remember my mom's classification. It was like stage C, three C, you know, it was like <laughs> right at the edge of super duper horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the stage four diagnosis doesn't happen overnight, right? No. Uh, and my dad's journey into his health decline is being dismissed by the medical world, which is really, really sad. And I think that's such an important piece of caregiving is not only the caring, <laughs> but the advocacy, right? The learning, the learning, um, not to interrupt you, but my mother passed in 2015 from complications of diabetes. And that's really what started changing my trajectory mm-hmm. into what I do because we are our best advocates. And as children, we become our parents' best advocates. Yes. But you have to understand what's going on and don't treat the medical profession as all knowing they're humans. They're doing the best they can with what they were taught. So um, just to interject that a little bit, because I think a lot of people often just go, well, I got it. And they just follow the rules without advocating for themselves. And, And true. So true. I mean, full stop. That is, you know, say it one more time for the people in the back, right? Like advocating for yourself and for the one you're caring for is tremendous. And yes, the doctors went to school. They know a whole lot, but the individual, right? The patient, the client, the the parent you're caring for, they know their body because they've been living in that body for a long time, you know? Um, And I just want to, I want to hone that in when you Mm -hmm. are a caregiver, really step up. Don't be shy, you know, have your notepad, have your questions. And I'm not saying be rude, but be be firm and, you know, demand the time that you need so that questions can be answered. There can be clarity. Um, You know, if you're not sure, most likely your caregiving person is, you know, they're not sure either. <laughs> if you're concerned or confused, you know, they can repeat things. I think we put the medical folks on a pedestal um, for right, for wrong, and and um, and that's simply not needed. Absolutely, and it's difficult because we're in the emotions, mm-hmm. um, you know, and sometimes it takes the first time in the emotions to learn for the second time. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately. And then we feel like, oh, man, I wish I knew back then what I know now so I could have done things. And sometimes it's just about comfort. But, um, you know, your dad's very blessed to have you. And um, it's it's hard. It, it's hard. So how do you keep going, knowing that you have all this cancer in your family as well? Like, that's a big one. Yes. Oh, that's such a tremendous point, Jolene. Um, yes. Yeah, so I... I live by the rule that um, knowledge is power and not to be feared. So I have gone through genetic counseling. You know, um, again, what we know when we know we don't know from the past, you know, we didn't do anything with my mom's body in order to know if she had any mutations. But um, I have been following along with uh, feminine reproductive Mm -hmm. you know because I was greatly concerned about that after seeing how it just devastated her body and um and then uh as science is emerging which is so great and amazing uh they decided at some point you know well let's also test your dad you know and um so I I got a mutation from my father (laughs) (laughs) the gift that keeps on giving and um So that requires some assessments twice a year. And, you know, honestly, I have only done that once. Insurance is hard to come by. Yes. You know, I I am insured, but really underinsured. Yeah. Yoga teacher, I'm not making millions of dollars, and that's okay. No, but self-employment, it tends to be underinsured. Um, There is a lot of resources out there about genetics versus epigenetics. So I just don't want to scare everybody just because we carry certain genes. It's how we turn them on or off. Amen. Is huge once you realize that you can control if something gets turned on, as long as you catch it, like 
I get it. What Sometimes we let things go a lot too far, especially as women will complain and complain and complain and get ignored and being so, oh, it's just your hormones. It's just when it's not necessarily that. So always, you know, understand that a diagnosis even isn't always the, the end. It's, it's, it's the problem that you or challenge that you now can work towards, whether it's just a longer, happier quality of life, you know, all little things you could do to have the quality versus quantity sometimes. I mean, we got to make those choices, which are difficult. And I get that. It, it, but I love that you're being your best advocate the best you can. Because, yes, insurance does not cover a lot of these things because they're like, oh, you don't need it. <laughs> you're not yeah. sick. You don't need it. So true. <laughs> so true. I, I so appreciate what you said about the um, turning the gene on the mutation on, right? Cause we all have the genes, it's whether mm -hmm. we have or not. And that's where the caring for yourself comes in, right? The, the being good to you, uh, as the caregiver. Um, I absolutely agree. Uh, there should be no fear around anything that you might find out in genetic counseling. It is awareness. It is knowledge. It is empowering to have that, um, information because then you get to decide, what to do next, right? How you might make changes, if at all, how you're living, mm -hmm. your life, you know, how you look, uh, go throughout your day, like take a quick look, how you go throughout the day, how you start the day, how much sleep you're getting, hydration, you know, as right before we started, we both took a few sips of water because we know how important um, being well hydrated is to have a conversation like this <laughs> <laughs> and be able to speak well, you know, getting it, all the things count. Absolutely. So, so your dad got a diagnosis and then let's go back to the story. Your dad got a diagnosis. And so you became part of, I'm sorry, I, I'm really good about going this way and then this way. I welcome it. I welcome it. That's so, your dad, so now, now you're becoming a caregiver a second time. Yes. Yes. And now you're the primary caregiver versus being the secondary. Good distinction. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And living in the home and seeing the day to day unfolding. Um, and so, I mean, making a mistake, it was very scary. Mm -hmm. You know, he, at first, um, in the, in the initial meeting, the tumor board meeting with all the people coming in, we're so lucky he's been referred to Stanford. So when you're at Stanford, um, you know, everyone comes into a room, the main people, the people who are learning the students. Wow. Uh, it's very exciting and yet also overwhelming just to be in a smallish room with a lot of people, all eyes on your dad. Um, and initially he, he wanted to decline all the treatment, which was several radiations, um, eight chemotherapies, no surgery indicated. Uh, and you know, they basically told him you'll die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, if you don't say yes to all these things, this is so serious beyond serious. So he, he did step into it and, um, you know, I just said yes to all the things I was handed a caregiver manual, interestingly enough, which I didn't read Jolene until just last July when he was diagnosed with his third cancer, <laughs> because I thought I want to care for my dad. Of course, I'm going to do all the things. If he needs to go to an appointment, I'm going to do it. If he needs his food chopped, his pills crushed all the things I will do it. I stepped away from all my teaching minus one thing uh, in the fall of 2017. So I could be all hands on deck for him. He ended up in a sniff in a skilled nursing facility for mm, about 87 days. And I drove every day, you know, <laughs> on a 70 miles round trip from our home. And I don't care. I that was my desire to mm -hmm. do there for him in his need in his grave time of need. Um, but I read the manual last July. <laughs> and I realized, oh my goodness. Wow, Danae, this is not about how to care for dad. It's about how to care for you as the one that is giving the care. Wow. Outstanding. Amazing. And I, I, I think that's a point that a lot of caregivers neglect is themselves. It, it's, um, it's hard because when my mom was sick, my dad was the primary caregiver, though when she got really sick, I was, my work was nice enough to let me go every morning to go check in, prepare food. So I could, I basically got to work late, but that just meant I worked 
a lot later that night because I didn't have a typical nine to five job. <laughs> so, you know, I might show up at work at 1030, but I wasn't leaving till 930. So, you know, you forget to take care of you. And it accumulates, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, in that phase, that 2017 fall from July through December, you know, I ate horribly, you know, I put on some weight. And people say, oh, I can't see, I can't tell. And it's not about a number. It's about how my body changed. Like I wasn't taking care of myself at all. I, you know, I was putting him first and, and he would be the first to tell me when he wasn't severely medicated, <laughs> you know, to actually, Danae, you have to put yourself first. Yeah. You kind of lose yourself in the process, like, it, you know, and um, finding yourself again is, is difficult. And figuring out who you want to be on the other side. And it sounds like you've had several iterations of this as well now. Yes. And I feel like, uh, you know, first of all, to be funny, we would do anything to, you know, get a cash refund on all this experience that we have gained from first my mom, then my dad and his first um, cancer, and then his second and now is third. And we're grateful that it's all primary and not the M word, which I do not even say out loud because I don't want mm -hmm. to. Um, and yet, wow, it also is an opportunity for me to become better towards myself. Mm -hmm. And like, if we want to think about why, why did this happen to my mom? Why did this happen to my dad, our family? Why is this happening again? You know, you can dwell on that for a minute or an hour, but you know, definitely not longer than that. Cause it's yeah. not going to get you anywhere. Um, but it, it, the gift is that it, it's an opportunity to show up and be better each day. Mm hmm myself so what are some things you actually do besides yoga obviously <laughs> to take care of yourself like what what are your primary focuses to keep your health because one of the things I like to teach now that I learned unfortunately the hard way is if you don't take care of yourself eventually you cannot take care of the person who needs you yes yes um it was a long road backwards so that I was capable again um so what are things you like to incorporate or, or share with people so that they keep their sanity, they keep their physical health, their mental health? Because it's it's more than just, oh, I gained weight. Yeah, but are you sick? Are you so drained and tired you can't get out of bed to, to you know, take care of your family or your spouse or just you? You can't go for a walk. You, you got to the point where everything hurts. Like, how do you get out of that? Or how did you get out of that specifically? Yeah, well, I've had those days where everything hurts and I've had those days where I want to just stay under the covers for sure, honestly, um, full stop. And how do I get out of that? Laughter. Laughter is such an elixir for me and for my dad to make jokes, you know, to laugh instead of to cry. Nothing wrong with crying. And I've ab absolutely have shed enough tears on through all this time. Uh but laughter is so, so helpful to be silly. Mm -hmm. you know, um, definitely to get outside, to take a walk is helpful for me to clear my head. Um, you know, we are on a podcast right now, but tapping into that, you know, that's such a great way to um, learn something new or to be inspired uh, for a short period of time. So it, mm -hmm. it, I wouldn't say it's an escape, but it's it's a chance to kind of detach from the schedule yeah <laughs> the duties right the tasks at hand and sort of you know just focus for a 30 minute or a 45 minute chunk and and learn what you're going to learn in that talk so I really it, really enjoy podcasts yeah <laughs> I also think um the more you share and, and I want to encourage you to keep sharing because it makes people know they aren't alone even if they've gone through it and on the other side sometimes the guilt Mm -hmm. of what they might or might not have done. And it's like, you can only do what you can do. And you should never feel guilty about not doing enough. And, and it's hard to get that for me to explain that to people, because if you're not in it, it's like, I did the best I could. You did, you're doing the best you can for you, for your father, for your family. Like that's all we can do. And for some people, that means that they can't physically be hands on. They have to go to work to finance it all. Like, yes. and that's okay. Yes. And there are many ways 
to show up as a caregiver. And I, and I, I know the guilt piece, have I done enough? I have, you know, initially for sure, I would play that it's a game, you know, am I doing enough? Mercy me. Yes, you are doing it. You're driving a great distance every day to sit at a bedside and watch someone sleep mainly, or to make sure they're not using the suction device that I would remove all the secretions that formed in his mouth from the radiation. And instead I walk into the room and he's suctioning his sock because he's so like strung out on all the yeah. more, you know, it's really kind of cute to see it for a second, but <laughs> it, it, then, it's, it's funny now to talk about it. It's just not at the top. <laughs> Not at the time. No, no. But um, that's such a great piece because people will often ask, well, don't you have any siblings? And I say, I do. I have a brother and he lives on the East Coast. Which makes it difficult because he cannot be there. I mean, I'm blessed that when my dad started, we realized he couldn't live alone anymore. My brother stepped up to the plate and said, he's going to move in with me. Um, part of that is because my husband was out in the wild and this was all during COVID and my husband's a first responder. So we didn't want my dad to get sick either, but so he moved, we, we got the house ready. He moved in here and three days a week at the minimum, I drive to my brothers, just like you. It's, it takes me an hour to get here, an hour to get home. And I do and give him the relief. So we both work from home, which is we're blessed that way. So he can go do his meetings or he can get out of the house or you know, a week ago, it was his birthday. He went out with his friend, you know, his girlfriend, his friends, they went out. So things like that. And it's hard because you can't just say, well, why isn't it 50 50? Well, it's never going to be 50 50. You know, with my mom, my mom being female, there was a lot of things she preferred me to do versus my brother. The same with my dad. My dad's not going to let me go in when he takes a bath. You know, it, they're still private. Like, Yes. No, it's, this is such a true, true consideration. Yes, with my mom, for sure. I remember being in the shower and bathing her and not having any qualms or concerns. You know, interestingly enough that we did have a time in the SNF where I would assist the um, the CNA, the certified nurse assistant in bathing him. And he was wearing, you know, some underwears and uh, he had to be seated in a chair in order to do it. Um, and and we do joke, like, is that going to, are we going to get to a point where <laughs> I'll be wiping your bottom? Um, you that know. might happen, but we, you know right. what? We try to respect privacy until that needs to happen. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. You know, because the third cancer is prostate cancer. So many times I have been in the waiting room, not been in the actual room, um, just to give that level of comfort and privacy mm -hmm. because he is a man and these are the parts that are of concern. And, you know, let's, let's be mindful of that. And, and if, if, and when he says, you know, it's okay, come on over, come on in, you know, um, he'll, he'll make the comment senior porn to make everybody laugh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, those are important considerations, especially when it's, you know, opposite. Yeah. You know, and, and I mean, I'm hoping your brother does come visit. I mean, I'm sure he does and he calls and, you know, it's just hard. You know, I, I mean, I have family that had the similar situation and there was eight siblings, but it still falls on the one part because you also, when there's medical things going on, can't have a lot of people involved. It gets confusing. It's really? got to be pretty much the same person going to the doctors with them to get the information or same you know, if it's a big family, maybe the same two people, but when you've got five people and it's rotating, the information doesn't come across right. Like it gets lost in the um, shuffle a little bit. I agree. It could be so, the telephone game. Misinterpreting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Okay. So what else do you suggest to manage it all? Like where you don't get overwhelmed because it's a lot. It's a lot. It's not just you and what you need to do for your physical, your dad's physical, you know, well-being, doctors, food, cooking, cleaning, work, business, mm -hmm. all of it. So how do you incorporate it all? So or clarity manage it all. <laughs> yeah. Clarity and communication. So we have a board, uh, excuse me, a um 
a calendar that's attached to the refrigerator for my dad. And, you know, it's a dry erase situation. So we update all the things in terms of his schedule, medical appointments where he's got to go and be that I take him to, and also what Denny's doing. So 10 a.m. podcast interview on a Thursday, right? So, um, so that uh, he knows I'm unable to be available to him, right? And at first that was so hard. Like, of course, I, I feel like the scene in Love Actually, if people have seen this beautiful movie, which is about love and all the ways love happens. But Laura Linney's character, I think that's the actress, his name. She's the one that's always answering the phone for the brother, right? The mm-hmm. brother's always calling, even when she's about to get intimate with the really hot guy at, from work. <laughs> He's calling and she's answering the phone. Um, so... So setting some boundaries around Mm -hmm. all of it, you know? Um, So yes, my father can call me anytime, day or night. Am I going to answer every time, day or night? No, I have my phone on silent at nighttime. You know, we have agreed that if there's an emergency, he will take a 911 to a hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, we put some um, protocols, what if scenarios, so that uh, boundaries can be held. And yeah. Implemented. Now, I've got an important question. Do you have people around you to reach out for help when you do need a break? Not exactly. Not exactly, because my brother is on the East Coast. Um, and that's something I'm working on, where I, I, would, I could have a, I could release the control around it a little bit. If I'm being having, honest. having some even um, <laughs> it's something that we've talked about, too, is having someone come in for a few hours once mm-hmm. a week and just that few hours that, you know, they can get bathed or they cook a meal that day. And it gives you some I don't have to worry about it time <laughs> space. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, there's a neighbor that comes to mind that she and my dad, they know each other quite well. They have each other's phone numbers. I, you know, in a pinch. In fact, I have I have relied on her when you know my dad has said he ended up at a store and he thinks he left the key in the front door. <laughs> and I said to her, Hey, are you home by chance? And can you just walk across the street? And and if you see that key, can you put it in this location? <laughs> and sure enough, she saw that key and she put it in that location for us, you know, because I don't live with my dad anymore. I, I moved away in 2021. So I have my own space with my fiance, which is very nice. Um, but, uh, it's about 50 miles away. Oh, wow. Across the bridge. Yeah. And, um, I I still come over four or five times a week for sure on the schedule (laughs) and more if needed. Um, but so it, so I do, I guess I have Rebecca, so that's great. I have that. That's good. So I I get it. I, I live, um, through the canyons, we call it. I don't have a bridge. I have to go through the canyons. Nice. <laughs> it's a nice drive, though. It's peaceful. That's mm-hmm. what I look at. My drive time is peaceful time. Mm-hmm. Um, podcast time to listen to other people's stuff. <laughs> exactly. That's that's when I consume them in the driving. <laughs> mm-hmm. Everyone's like, how do you listen to books and all that? I'm like, well, I drive in, in the car. I don't listen to them pretty much any other time maybe on a walk here and there, but for the most part, driving. Agreed. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to hear that you do have an escape because I know when you're in it full time, it can get very, very overwhelming, very um, hard on you. So what else do you suggest for someone just getting into caregiving? Like that's just new to it because it can get over, like the beginning can be more overwhelming because you're not only dealing with needing to help somebody, you're dealing with a diagnosis of an illness most of the time. Okay. It's a rarity where it's just they got older and slowed down. Like you, that you kind of see as it happens. But when someone gets diagnosed with cancer or some other disease where they need someone pretty much full time at first. Wow. I think to just give yourself a hug and say, this is such a beautiful gift you are giving to the person and to yourself and that no matter what you are doing your best every day when you show up you're doing your best and believe it so wholeheartedly um and that um 
take the breaks, you know? Um, the 24 seven mode is not sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> burnout will happen fast and and then what also can happen which sometimes does happen for my dad and I is that miscommunication you know um maybe I I'm noticing this a lot more because his decline is starting to really happen in terms of um walking you know he now walks mm-hmm. with him. and I I get so sad because like adult Danae knows he will not live forever and baby Danae wants him to live forever. Um, so sometimes I, I might rush him or I might be abrupt with my speaking and Mm -hmm. then realize that and see that and get all sad about that and apologize. So if you're starting, then, then just realize every day is a little different. You are doing your best. Um, it's going to be hard. It's going to be exhausting, but taking care of yourself, putting the oxygen mask on first. Like we, we hear every time we board a plane, it's so, so true. Um, and that your person, they're going to be okay with that because they want to make sure you can keep helping them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're going to be your biggest fan and support of that, that you take a break actually. Exactly. And, and honestly, I look at it more now as being blessed to have that time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> The one thing we are not promised is tomorrow. Exactly. For ourselves, for our spouses, for everybody. Like we're not. (laughs) So enjoy it and make the best of it Mm -hmm. is what I like to say. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it is what it is in in life. We know is not easy. So just feel blessed that you can have that time and do what you can and be okay with whatever it is. Acceptance is huge. Mm Mm-hmm. Acceptance is huge. Yes. And it's something I grapple with, right? Because in yoga, we are taught to release attachment, you know, and, um, you know, my dad is very logical. He'll say, you know, it's, it's only going to happen once, Danae. <laughs> when you might come here and I'm not able to say anything back to you, um, as I passed, um, uh, but just take it day by day. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to say thank you so much for this conversation because I think it's going to help a lot of people in similar positions. Um, Where can people find you? I know that you primarily do yoga and and teach online um, and in person. Yes, I I am all uh, teaching online. Excuse me, I am all teaching on person. I have one private client that is out of state. She lives on an island, actually, Puget wow. Island, all places. So I, I'm not commuting to her anytime <laughs> uh, soon. So we we do meet on FaceTime <clears throat> for her lesson. But I have public classes in Livermore and Castro Valley. I have the university class. And then private yoga support is in-person preferred all around the Bay Area. I travel for that. Um, and where people can connect with me is on Instagram. I, that's my favorite social media platform. My full name at Denise Robinette. Um, my website is also my full name, www.denerobinette.com. And I will have all of that information linked in the show notes. And um, I really appreciate your time because I know time is valuable for a lot. And sometimes this is your personal time. So I'm I'm happy to have you and... I look forward to speaking to you again about maybe some other relaxation and stress techniques in the future, because I think that that would be another great topic. And um, anyway, you're a great person of service. So I appreciate you taking this time. I really do appreciate it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Jolene. Thank you for your time as well. Thank you for this platform that you are offering of learning and sharing ideas. And absolutely, I would be so delighted to return and come back and share some of those protocols and techniques with the community. Awesome, thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Wonderful, bye. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Danae and please make sure you check the show notes for all of her information, including her upcoming retreat to the Galapagos Islands. Until next time, friends, bye. Thanks for listening in today. I hope you've got some nuggets to take away on your health journey. 
Remember, this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes. No medical advice is being given. By listening to this podcast, you agree to the full disclaimer, which is linked in the show notes. You can stay connected to me by joining the newsletter at holistichealthmadesimple.com, where I share additional tips and tricks weekly. Once again, thank you for being a part of my community, and until next time, have a blessed day.